Just doing a little bit of a mic test here. Uh, if you can hear me just fine, give me the thumbs up. I'm going to get started here really soon. It's going to be more of a casual stream, less of a lecture like the last few ones. Do a little bit of exploratory coding. Nothing too serious here. Thank you, thank you. Just waiting to see for more people to follow in here. Just gonna, anybody has any questions or anything like that, feel free to ask. Um, just chilling out here, enjoying my coffee. Hmm. Things are ready for dropping by. Um, give it a minute or two here. I don't plan to do a very long stream. I'm just going to do a bit of coding and answer any questions people might have about uh, the stuff. I don't know how far we'll get today, but uh, just you know, take take our time. I want just to explain a few things. You know, people might have confusion over. How many people we got now? Uh, okay. Okay. Great. How's everybody doing today? So we got a few more people in the chat now. Thanks for dropping by. And I appreciate anybody who's watched my previous streams on this topic. It's good to see that people are interested. There's not a lot of people out there who do multiplayer program and have actually ship games, so I know it's kind of hard to find information on this stuff. So I'm doing as much as possible to provide any new documentation uh, from any, you know, for a perspective of real, real world experience on releasing these kind of uh, games with, you know, multiplayer games with this kind of net code. So, sorry, my voice might be a little crackly. It's like nine in the morning. <laughs> Great. Okay. Um, I think I'm going to get started here. Again, this is not going to be like a lecture or anything like that previously. This is just a kind of exploratory coding stream. We'll see how far we can get. Uh, I'm going to start here with like an agenda and we'll try to follow it as much as possible. I'm not going to do any like complicated uh, coding architecture or anything like that. It's just going to be as straightforward as possible, some simple functions uh, do to do all this stuff and uh, a little example game along with it it's not gonna be complicated anyway um, I think the idea right now I guess I can get started here is uh, just talking a little bit you know feel free to reply uh, ask questions but uh, yeah let me turn the music off here yeah again Thank you all for dropping by. I hope uh, you can learn something from this. And again, appreciate anybody who's a repeat viewer. And of course, thank you to the new people coming by. I hope uh, my explanation uh, is satisfactory and hopefully easy to understand. Anyway, okay. So what do I want to do today? Basically just some exploratory coding on implementing a very simple game that has uh, a peer-to-peer -peer network connection I think the idea is we're just going to have start with something very simple and uh, I want to make mistakes by doing this, by doing the very naive implementation of this stuff and then we're just going to correct those mistakes one by one. Um, the game 
the test game I implement here is just going to basically be two uh, playable characters that move on screen. Just going to be for now just two circles uh, that you can control with your uh, gamepad, and those gamepad inputs are going to be sent over the network. And if you've seen any of my previous streams, uh, you you'll know that the only thing we need to to uh, synchronize two game clients is input from the controller. So yeah. Uh, so what are we doing here? What, what's the what's the plan? Let me see. Let me pull this up. Should have a window here. Oh, here we go. Okay. So what's the plan? Uh, let me know if the oh the text is kind of small, isn't it? Oh, hold on. Why is the text so small? Give me a second here. I thought I could zoom in with control here. Uh, give me a second. There's always issues with something. I thought control, control and plus, oh, control and equal. There we go, oh, control, control. Uh, well, that's the opposite of what I wanted. <laughs> there we go, great. Anyway, um, why does scroll wheel not work in Visual Studio Code? That's a little bit odd. Cool, um, so this is the basic agenda here that I'm for today. Um, it's, it's kind of just want to set up a simple two entity video game where you can you can move two dots around the screen with controls so just like uh, so the top level what we're doing is two uh, two two players on the screen with uh, each represented by a, a circle so it's very simple that's the idea we're gonna do you're just gonna have two circles on screen each controlled by one player. Um, so to achieve that, what do we need to do? Well, what are the steps? Let's just see. Um, okay, the first step is we need to represent those uh, positions in, in memory uh, and say the velocity. So that needs to be uh, stored as a vector. So eh, we'll get to the details later. So basically the idea is we need to um, add some game state for each player and then we need to implement the code that actually updates the game right so uh, we need to add a, um, so game simulation code for moving players um, and you also need to handle input so so at some point we need to look up input polling so uh, handle input polling for each player for now, we're just going to do it locally. We'll get to the network stuff very soon. So hopefully, this won't take too long. Um, this might be a multiple stream. Stream probably will <laughs> multiple uh, a multiple stream project. But anyway, um, and then after all that is done, we're gonna have to start doing networking. So uh, this is part two of this is uh, set up networking. So what do we need to do at first? Well, for peer to peer connection, we need to have uh, a host and a client. Even if it's not really a server-based game, we need somebody to set up a connect, uh, a host, and then the client's going to have to connect to it. So, uh, so set up host and client um, code, whatever. Yeah, it's simple enough. Um, and then once we have the connection set up, uh, hard. We need to send data. So uh, handle. As we discussed before, we need to actually send input from the players. So uh, we need to handle sending messages that include player input. Okay, this is going to be the communication layer stuff. Um, and once we get to that part, what we're going to do? We're going to have to handle the actual synchronization, right, of the uh, gameplay state. So um, we need to have. Uh, so we need to be able to read uh, the input sent over the network and apply it to our game simu simulation. Okay, um, so it's simple. We'll be able to like take the, the message we've received over the network, uh, pull out you know, controller inputs from that, and then just use that when we update our next game simulation. That's just gonna be the very naive implementation um, we're gonna do here. So, 
Yeah. Sweet. I think that's the general idea of this program here. I've already done some uh, setup work here. So we're not going to start from complete scratch here. It's going to just take two. There's some issues that you always have when you set up a new project, like compile errors and stuff like that. When you use a third party library, there's always issues. So I've already, kind of already handled that already. So we're just not going to deal with that part of, you know, luckily. Um, yeah, any confusion here about what our plan is? Um, we'll get to the rollback stuff and the, you know, the actual clock synchronization uh, once we get to the networking portion. The gameplay part won't take too long. We're just moving like two circles on screen, basically just applying a velocity uh, to um, the playable characters and then updating the position based on the velocity. Hey, well, hey, Ken Gellion. <laughs> Uh, so, okay, sweet. Um, I've already kind of set up a little simple project here. I'm kind of exploring a uh, library that looked pretty easy to use. I've heard a lot about called uh, Raylib. This lets you, it has a bunch of like standard game um, stuff you need for games for implementing uh, things like input and rendering stuff like that so I'm using that if anybody's interested in it you should check it out it's called Raylib um, if you want to follow along but like I said I did start implementing this in a very simple skeleton project so great yeah and for the networking I'm, I'm still exploring this we can explore it together actually um, I'm using the recommended network library. I know um, I, it's called MBNet. I don't have a browser up here, but uh, if you want to search for it, it's MBNet. Cool. Okay, let me get out our agenda here. Jump right into code for a bit. Um, again, this is a little more casual, so I'm gonna have to like clean up some of this code. I was just testing out some stuff, so uh, just a bit of introduction to uh, again. What we're doing in our agenda was we need to set up, you know, entity state. Well, sorry, we need to set up state for the players in the game, right? So um, I've already done this here. Um, so this is the entity state. For now, we're just giving a position, which is just a 2D vector. Um, let me zoom in here, make it easier to see for you all. Uh, and the 2D vector is just defined as two integers. It's very simple. Um, if you're not familiar with C++, sorry, this is just in in initializers uh, setting the values of each coordinate to zero. Anyway, yeah, uh, we have our entity state here, and this is what we're going to actually try to replicate over the network. Now, the way we replicate is through what's called uh, synchronous lockstep. We're not actually sending the state over the network. We're only sending inputs, as I explained in previous uh, streams. Um, but we'll be able to like replicate um, the state exactly by using synchronous lockstep. Cool. Um, and again, we just have position and velocity because the only thing we're going to see on screen is a dot for each player moving around. Um, and and for now, our entire game is going to be stored in this uh, other structure called simulation state. Right now, the only state we have is the individual states for the two players. So I just have an array here uh, of those two entities. Um, there's some other code you can ignore for now. <laughs> um, I'm just using I was using it for testing some stuff, but uh, yeah. Anyway, so what do we want to do here? So the easiest thing to start with is we want to represent the two dots on screen, right? The two circles on screen for each player, and then we'll get to actually updating the position, things like that. So I've already kind of jumped in here. It's from exploratory code. Um, we have our main game loop right here. Just It's just a while loop. Everything up here is set up code and stuff I was doing for testing. You can ignore that for now. And honestly, I can just kind of delete that. <laughs> um, so I'm going to move that off to something else and save it for later. Anyway, um, hopefully the game will boot up. No, where are the errors? Oh. Oh, sorry, it's some of the network code I was setting up. Let me just comment that out real quick. We'll, we'll jump back to that here in a bit. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I've already set these two dots on screen. Uh, we'll let red be player one and blue be player two. Um, so I'm just doing that with a simple draw command. This is part of Raylib. 
if you want to look up what these uh, function definitions are, there's a cheat sheet. It's pretty easy to understand. I'm going to delete some of this extra code. But yeah, this is our main drawing code here. This Again, this is exploratory coding, so it, I'm not really doing any complex architecture at the moment. So forgive me for not following uh, necessarily best practices. Um, we'll move it out into its independent function here in a bit um, so we can abstract things away. But I like to start like on very flat programs first when I'm like exploring stuff. So okay, um, before we start our main game loop, so this is our main game loop. Um, we're using Ray Raylib to control the uh, frame rate that's set with here. Um, we're not actually doing our own, well, I'm not actually doing any uh, manual control of the gameplay, uh, sorry, the main game loop at the moment, but uh, Raylib is handling the uh, frame limiter, frame limiting, I guess. Um, again, I'm not super experienced with it, so if we run the issues, uh, we'll, we'll solve those together, I guess. Anyway. Cool, so we're back to drawing the circles, I guess, and uh, we need to actually pull the position from our gameplay state, right? Our simulation state. This represents our entire game again. Um, everything here needs to be replicated for us to keep the two game clients synchronized so that the players can see the same thing on both screens. Okay, so we have the struct here. I'm just going to initialize above the game loop our, our gameplay, our game state, right? So um, simple enough, um, I'm just going to call it game state for now. We can rename it later. And this is going to contain our two um, entity states. Cool. So um, for now, we're just going to pull the position for each player. Um, you know, in, We know how to actually draw now, so I'm going to abstract this away into another function. So the easiest way to do that is uh, let's just make a new function that handles the drawing, so draw entity. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to pass in the uh, entity state. So it's going to make it constant. So we don't expect to modify any of this stuff. So uh, and we're going to pull out this function here and take the positions. So oh, it's going to be state position dot x. I believe is what I named it, and state that position. Now, actually, the problem with this, you'll see here in a second. That's not really a problem, but our coordinate system is based on top left being uh, x equals zero, y equals zero. We'll, we'll solve that later if we, we if we want to have a standard coordinate system. But for now, this is good enough. Oh, and we're gonna actually have to specify a color for each. Um, hold on real quick. So, yeah, we need to get specified a color. So, I'm just going to pass in color here. Oops. Uh, and we're just going to keep a uh, standard radius here. We can change that later. Anyway, this should be good. So, instead of doing this, we should be able to do, um, let's see. Yeah, let's just pass in perimeters for now to see if we see the same thing. I, I, oh yeah, I need pass in state. Whoops. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> uh, okay. All right. So we're gonna pass in the um, auto completion is not working very well. Unfortunately, I don't have Visual Assist, which is what I usually use for this stuff in uh, 2019. I need to update my license. Hold on. Where would, where would it go? Okay. It should be entity. Oh yeah, entities. Sorry. I don't know if I spelled that right, but anyway, um, I'm going to draw entity zero, entity one. Okay, if I go a little too fast here, I'm sorry. <laughs> Again, just some exploratory programming. This will be set up pretty quickly, ho hopefully. Um, okay. Oh, before we draw, I want to do a little bit of initialization of the positions. So we're going to take the game state. Oops, game state. Uh, dot entities zero dot position so let's 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 say position dot x equals for the first one uh, 200 we need to have an initial position that is the same for both entities once we get the network portion we have to make sure the initial state of everything is the same on both clients otherwise the synchronization uh, well, we actually can't synchronize, so 
you know, start off on a bad initial state, which is not anything you want to do. Okay, cool. And so then you set up uh, some arbitrary position for the second entity. Okay, hopefully this will work and not crash. Okay, oh, this, bo both are red, sorry. Let me set this one to blue. Okay. Okay, cool. So this is kind of neat. We've now separated the, uh, we haven't really separated, but we have a, uh, a visual for each entity which represents the internal game state. And there's no dependency on, um, on the gameplay side on the, the uh, visualization. So it's separate. This is something that's gonna be very important later on. Um, but for now, we can now update those variables inside the, the entity state and we'll see well, of course, we'll see the uh, see it reflected on screen. Okay, cool. That's a very just simple game loop uh, with some player characters. Now, ideally, I would like to um, have input, right? Uh, let me look up the cheat sheet real quick for input and raylib. I haven't spent any time on the input part, but it shouldn't be too difficult. Uh, hold on. Let's see. Uh, maybe let me open up a browser window for y'all. It should be easier that way. Uh, let me just add that to OBS real quick. Window. Oops. Okay, let's see. Can we see this? No, not yet. Let me change this real quick. What is this called? It should be Raylib. I wonder if I had like a filter search on OBS. Where is it? Chrome. Oh, here we go. Great. Uh, let me move this down a little bit. Awesome. Okay, do we have any input stuff here handling? Okay, looks like we have quite a few input related functions. Um, I don't know if you can see here. Um, these are just checking to see if a key is pressed, a key is down. It looks like you pass in the key. There's probably an enum somewhere. Uh, da, da, da. So what we care about is whether or not a key is being pressed to move the character around. Um, we could do keyboard, but I think I'm just going to stick with the controller for now. Um, hopefully it will just support X input out of the box so I can use my Xbox pad. Yeah, what we're looking for is something to see whether or not an, a button is held down. Okay, so this is a function we want to use. Um, I don't know what context this button can be used, so I'm going to look for an example uh, for Raylib. Um, let's see. Luckily, this library is well documented, so it shouldn't take us too long to implement something like this. A core. Uh, oh yeah, here we go. Input looks like. So we can find this function. Oop. Okay, it looks like you don't need to. Okay, it looks like we need to check to see if the game pad is available. So we'll go ahead and use that in our while while loop. Um, let's rename this drawing section for now. Um, we can abstract this away into a function later. Oop, you can't see it, can you? Um, I just added some comments here, but yeah, I'm just going to check to see if there's a game pad and, uh, then we can handle inputs. So let's see, it looks like it's pretty straightforward. We just need to get the value from, uh, this function. Okay. Great. Oops. I didn't want to do game pad that available. Sorry. I want to do this game button down. Give me a second here. So we have this function. It looks like it lists easily pull down any input. I don't know all the enums for this. So button middle right. It says PS3 start. Interesting. Hold on. Let me look at this code. Go to definition. Looks like we have in this enum all the face buttons. So we have no attack or anything like that. Let's just use the face buttons for now. 
So that's pretty straightforward. Up, right, down, left. Okay, cool. So to test this, let's, uh, yeah, let's use the face button up. And when the button is held, let's move the uh, the first entities up position a little bit. Again, this is this exploratory coding. Uh, we'll see if anything works first. So uh, this is updating at 60 FPS. So I'm just going to move it one pixel per frame. Well, let's do two, just in case. We're just going to move it up when the up button is pressed. So. I have my pad. Hopefully it'll work. <laughs> oh, oh, you don't actually see this. So let me add this window real quick. Oops. I'm surprised nobody pointed this out. So uh, let's add this window. Okay, this is our game here. Sweet. Okay, so when we press up, oh, what happens there? The entity went down. <laughs> As I mentioned before, the top left is actually our origin. So it's not too difficult to resolve. We just need to change, do a changing coordinate system in our drawing code. For now, all we're going to do is going to invert the position. Or we're just going to change our uh, origin. So um, what is our translation in, in um, screen space? If you know anything about um, stuff, we're just going to translate from game space to screen space. Um, we're not going to do anything like matrix multiplication at the moment, even though it's really easy to do. Um, for now, um, all I'm going to do is uh, we're just going to define real quick screen width, screen height. So um, so I believe Raylib's doing everything in screen space at the moment. So um, and actually, I'm going to move this up. We're going to have some configuration parameters later. So. Forgive me for the lack of um, quality code organization here. Um, so what we need to do basically is convert again from game space to screen space. Let's just assume our game space is the same size, so a 1080 by 1080 arena, so to speak. And let's just put the uh, origin on the bottom halfway through the screen. So how do we convert from that well width is pretty easy um, we're just going to add half the screen width to each position um, let's see if there's any translation uh, functions here give me a second uh, let's see Now let's see if there's any like uh, quick. Whoops. There might be some translators. Hmm. Any matrix code? Okay. Screen space related functions. Here we go. Uh, Okay, I'm just gonna. So, I'll, for now, I'm just gonna ignore that stuff. I don't want to spend too much time on that. So, let's see. We're just gonna do it by hand for now. Our game's not that complicated. We don't need to have general screen space trans uh, transformation. So, for now, we're just gonna um, add half the screen width for our um, horizontal position, and for our vertical position. So zero is going to be at the bottom, and 
positive numbers will bring the entities up. So we need to, to start at the bottom, we need to add the screen height. So, and then subtract the Y position because down in screen space is positive. So we need to subtract it to go up, right? Okay, um, that should work. We should have circles at the bottom of the screen or at least up should bring them up. Great. Um, and then I'm just going to change the initial position of these of these entities. Um, we'll, we're going to put him at negative 200 and, and this one at positive 200. So they should be like pretty evenly spaced. Uh, height is too high. I want to bring it down a little bit. Let's do 100. OK. 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 So up will move them up, obviously, on the controller. And uh, I don't have a down yet. So if you want something like a down, you know, we can just go through here and actually uh, move all of them. Oh, I'm sorry, move all of them. We can move the entities depending on what the button press is pretty easily just by doing something like this, right? Um, so, so I'm going to fix this up to make it useful for network programming here in a bit, but this is just an example. Exploratory is programming. So we would need to subtract the position for up and down. So that works. And left and right would be something similar. So I mean, my auto formatting stuff is not working right now. Uh, Hopefully it's left and right is correct. And then we just, instead of uh, adding and subtracting the Y position, we add and subtract the X position. And then should be able to move left and right. Oop, what did I mess up there? Left should be subtracted and right should be added. Of course, if I'm going too fast here, you want me to slow down, let me know. Okay, so this is the, just the basic controls for moving entities. So we know we can do this. We can know that we can update the game state for each entity and it's going to reflect some changes on screen. But I could add a second controller here and, and, um, and do the same thing, but I don't want to have a bunch of unique code <laughs> for each entity. Uh, so we need to start thinking about converting those inputs from the player, not just directly reflecting uh, those inputs in the entity state, but we need to somehow synchronize those inputs across the network. So we need to store off those inputs as well. We can't just use them to change the entity state. Otherwise, the other network clients is not going to see those changes. We're not using any kind of server client replication here. If we were, we could just send the game state. But again, for fighting game networking, we don't generally use that. Um, so this is like our first thing where I'm saying, OK, we're going to try something and then fix it. So what we need to do, OK, we need to make a general input structure, right? And we're going to send that structure as a message over the network. We're not getting to the network part yet, but for now, locally, we need to treat that input structure as if it were the direct inputs from the gamepad. So I'm just going to store those inputs off in the enum that we're just going to uh, and together with a uh, Boolean operation. So um, up here, I'm just gonna define, again, apologize for the lack of code structure here. Um, so I'm gonna delete some code I was using for another project, test project earlier. Oop. Okay, so below the simulation state, we're gonna define new input enum. So I'm just gonna call it a input command. If you don't know what enums of are, don't worry too much about it. Um, whoops. And I'm just going to define a few enums. And actually, I'm going to do an enum class here and just make it an int, a, an unsigned int. Uh, actually, I'm going to do unsigned. No int, int for now. OK. So basically, um, I'm just going to define each of these. So uh, let me start with up. And that's going to be 
equal to one. Actually, I'm gonna do none for now, just be convenient. Uh, I'll, I'll get, don't need to worry about that. I'll get back to that later. <laughs> um, and down, I'm making these each a power two so I can do a bitwise um, or operation uh, on them. Okay. Honestly, for this project, these all could be separate. I don't, well, I, I need a vertical and horizontal, but for convenience for now, we're just going to do this. Okay. And we should be able to like bitwise, you know, combine all these to uh, get the entire input state because we only have up, down, left, right. Correct. Sweet. Anyway, uh, so now instead of like storing off the position of the characters uh, when reading the input directly, we're going to store off the input input command in some um, in some uh, structure. For now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to I'm going to move this up real quick. Mm, okay, I'm going to move this up above all this stuff real quick. Okay. Stores a single stores the entire input state for a given frame and given player. Okay. I'm gonna say yeah. So for now, I'm gonna store off the inputs in the in the game state. We can make this separate, but you'll see later on while this why this will end up being useful. So uh, we need two input states, right? One for each player. So um, I'm just gonna store off input command into the inputs here, and. Uh, For now, I'm going to go through here and uh, instead of doing this code here, we're going to move this to some like gameplay update code here in a second. I'm going to put it here for now and uh, let's comment that off. We'll get back to it. Okay, the idea here now is we're going to store off the input command um, in the simulate in the game state. Okay, so. Zero represents player one, right? So what we're going to do is actually, before we do any of this, we need to we need to initialize this stuff. So just at the very beginning of the game, we need to just set this to zero. Zero just meaning oh, sorry, got it. That's why I wanted to do that. I don't want to do any casting here, so I'm just going to add a default state to this. I call it none. Okay. Cool. Um, all that needs to be a player one. Okay, now we have that initialized at the beginning of the game. We can go through here and. Uh, You know what? I might change this. this it's going to complain a little bit about some casting. <laughs> um, I forgot how I actually forgot about input. Uh, sorry, about any num classes. Um, so I don't want to spend too much time doing weird workarounds for C++. So I'm just going to make the uh, input state just an unsigned int here. Hopefully, okay. Uh, so we'll just have to do a basic cast here. Ech. So I don't want to do very specific C++ stuff. <laughs> 
uh, in this stream, but uh, well, for now, I'm just going to do that. Um, if you don't know what a static cast is, don't worry too much about it. Um, anyway, just moving on. Basically, just converts the type. Give me a second. Get some coffee here. Talking for nearly an hour wears you out. Turns out, I don't know how how streamers do this stuff. Anywho, um, so so basically, I'm just gonna assign. We just have uh, left face up. We want to assign up, so. Again, this input cast thing, this cast thing here is just for converting. Um, so I'm able to actually do a bitwise or operation. And bitwise or is just going to add that input to uh, to that unsigned int as a, uh, it's just going to, it's going to enable one of the bits inside of the unsigned int. Okay. And uh, down, we're just going to do down. So we're going to get rid of this else if stuff here. Uh, I'll, I might explain that in a bit, but for now, we're just going to allow you to enable every input inside of that input flag if you want to. So if you press all four buttons, it's, they're all going to be set to one. Okay, get rid of the gameplay code here and just do down. And then same thing here. I'm going to do left and then right. Here we go. Oh, get rid of that else if again. If we really want to get, in, get into this, we could distract away these inputs um, into some kind of like configuration, but we're not going to do that in this. Just a little too much extra work. <laughs> okay, cool. So now what we, we're actually storing off these inputs. We need to use them in the game play code. So, oops. Let me uncomment this stuff. I'm going to get rid of uh, this and replace it with the actual input state check. So what we need to do is uh, check for each individual input whether or not that flag is on. So uh, we need to do a, sorry. Yeah, give me a second here. I don't know why I'm drawing a blank at the moment. <laughs> we, just need to, we just need to do a, uh, a mask here, right? So we need to just uh, do a bitwise mask. So we need to do, this is going to be up, right? So it's going to let me do a bitwise. No, I'm going to have to do a static cast. I'm just going to say if this is true. It's a little verbose, but hopefully this will all work. So let's just let's just test that idea, see if that works real quick. What's it complaining about? Um, let's just see if it equals one. OK. Um, I don't want to do another cast a Boolean. So or I can just do this, honestly. What What is it complaining about? OK. Hopefully that will work. Yep, so pressing up works, but up, I released the button and it's still going up. What happened there? Well, we need to clear out the inputs each frame. <laughs> it's not going to know that we released the button, right? So uh, before, before this step, we need to clear out the inputs. So we're going to set it to zero. It's one of those things where like we create problems and we solve them. So I press the button and release and we get up. Okay, cool. And we just need to, so that means it works. So we just need to do that for all the inputs. So 
Uh, do, 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 do. Okay, where was that? Okay. Um, I'm just going to go through here and just add, add them all real quick. Oops. Okay. Up, down, left, right, down. Oops. Up, down, left, and right. And I just need to add, take this code, right? Okay, so we should be able to move the character up, down, and left, and right. And we can delete this now. Okay, let's just say movement control. And let's just uh, block this off into its own little. Oh, can I surround that with a block? Ah, yeah, Visual Studio doesn't give me this nice uh, refactoring stuff without it plug in. Okay, great. Hopefully, people are still sticking around. I know it's a little boring if you're not familiar with this stuff, but. Please hang in with me here. Um, cool. Wow, we got quite a few viewers. Cool. Well, thank you all for hanging out. Sweet. Okay. So we should be able to control the character now um, with with the gamepad. Up, down, left, right. Up, down, left, and right. Okay. That's awesome. So he's now abstracted away the input from the actual gameplay control right as long as we have that input state we can control the character it's separately from the actual input polling from the hardware once we get to the networking portion we're just going to send uh, that variable over the network as a message and decode it and then apply it on the local client on that side okay sweet so we need the same kind of uh, we could implement a player two controller here on um, on this side but for this project the whole idea is, is just it's all in line so I'm just not going to do that for now we have to keep things keep things simple okay um, oh by the way if you guys want me to put this on github or something I'll definitely do that um, later on it's not the best example of a well-structured game but uh, it might be useful in some way as an example. Okay. Oh, okay. What do we need to do next? Okay. Let's see. Oh, that's not my example. What? What is? Where is my agenda? Let's see. So we added some game state for each player, game simulation code for moving players, handle input polling for each player. Okay, we've done this, but actually I want to do something else before we move on. It's almost been an hour here, but I'll keep going for a little while. Instead of updating position directly with inputs, I just want to add a velocity, and then we're just going to update the position based on the velocity instead of the, uh, the input state directly. Okay, so the simplest thing to do there is uh, we're just going to handle, you know, I'm going to say handle physics. So we're, we're going to have physics now, a physics simulation. Very simple, just per frame updates based on the velocity. So um, what we're going to do is say, uh, yeah, and actually we, one other thing, I didn't make sure to at least input the player two side. Uh, movement control as well. So we need to abstract this stuff. We need, we don't want to like directly reference the entity. So this is the point where we need to move everything into a separate function. I wonder if Visual Studio gives me that by default. Can I do a refactoring? Extract function, great. Okay. Um, I don't want to... We'll fix this up here in a second. But... Uh, I'm sorry, King. You can always uh, check out. Oh, thanks for dropping by. By the way, um, we're gonna check this. So what's gonna be, what's gonna call it? Tick entity. 
you know what? I'm not gonna call it tick. I'm just gonna call it update entity. Okay. I'm gonna fix this up here in a second. So right now we pass in the game simulation. I don't want to do that. I want to pass in an entity. So uh, let's see. Entity. Entity state. Entity. It's gonna call it entity. Um, and then we're gonna replace. Oh, sorry. So we we need two things. We need the input and the entity state. So uh, we're just gonna type pass an in input. Um, and then we're just gonna do all the operations on the input variable instead. And then all the operations that were on the, the entity zero, we'll just use this uh, permitter instead, the entity permitter. And she will just use that f function in the same way we used the block of code before. Okay. Let's see. Yeah. Um, we need to do game state. Was it input zero? I think that was what it was. Oh, input zero, okay. And then uh, we do game state and the first entity, right? And it should work in the same way, oh, entities, okay. Oop, I had an error, what did I do? Oh. It created a header for me. I don't need that. Dang you, Visual Studio. Okay. 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 So we still have control. Great. Even though we abstracted away the movement into its own function, it works as before. Uh, da, da, da. Let me close this little thing. So um, just as a demonstration, I just want to prove that... Uh, we could control the second entity too, so with the same input. So as long as I do that, we should be able to control both at the same time, as you can see here. But we don't want player two to use the same inputs as uh, player one, so you can see here. Now we would actually have to update the inputs for player two based on what was being sent over the network. It's going to be vice versa, actually, so we're going to have to abstract it a little bit more later on. Uh, we're going to have to have an input source, and the input source is either going to come from the network or local. Um, but we'll get to that at some point. Okay. Um, before we move on, I do want to move... Well, I do want to change the entity up to code to use uh, velocity to update position and not the input directly. So uh, the easiest way to handle that is just take the into position and add the uh, velocity so um, X and the same for Y I don't I haven't I could have easily oops what am I doing here I could have uh, done operator overloading to make this a little simpler but uh, um, again this is just exploratory demonstration code so we will not go into that keep it simple if we had a lot of physics going on, or using a lot of vectors everywhere, I would add a, I would, you know, overload the addition operator. But I'm not doing that now. Great. So now, if we want, say, the character to update two pixels per second, right? We instead of adding to the position directly, we just set the velocity. So velocity, viscosity. Man, I really wish I had a uh, Visual Assist installed in here. <laughs> I might do that for the next um, stream. We need to make it a negative two, and hopefully everything will work the same. Oops, a double equal is not going to work. And let's make that, oh, so this needs to be negative two, right? Okay, so it should just work. We're adding the 
velocity, each frame to the position. Great. Sweet. And works as before. Uh, one thing, though, is we release the button, guess what happens? They keep moving. Uh, that would be fine. I, that's not what I want. Uh, so we need to set the velocity to zero before we check any input. So simple enough. I'm just going to invert this just so we have x coming first and y coming second to stay consistent. Okay. Let's just say vertical control and horizontal control. Okay. Okay, great. Um say this is So the entity. Okay. Cool. So that should fix that issue. Hey, hey, Curly, what's up? Long time no see. We are making. Ah, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, that's a good joke. Uh, yeah. If people want on GitHub, I'll put it on GitHub. It's just an example project, so. I wouldn't use it for a real game. Okay, so we can see we can press a button release and the character stops moving. Awesome. So we kind of a basic game here. It's it has game state, it has rendering, uh, it responds to player inputs. So are we, are we do we have enough to start doing networking stuff yet? Well, what we can try to do is run two instances and send the input over the network and then see if it reflects on the other screen okay that would be a very naive implementation but it's, it's first steps and I do want to take these things what you know step by step so okay going back to our agenda here our plan file where's that okay. let's see um, so we need to set up, before we do any of that stuff, we need to set up a connection. So uh, we need to set up a host and a client connection. I guess we'll start with that. Give me a few minutes here. I'll take a short break, get some water. And we're going to start on the uh, networking portion of this. Th thanks for uh, hanging in there. <laughs> Okay, I'm back. Where, where, where are we at? Oh yeah. Before we do anything, we need to set up a connection between uh, two game clients. But in order for 
the connection gets established, you actually need someone hosting first so the other client can connect. But we'll treat them kind of as, as equals once the game session starts, right? It's uh, this is peer-to-peer -peer networking, so there's not like a single host that shares the connection with a bunch of players. It's just two players connected with each other, basically. Okay, the point of this stream really isn't to show how to like set up this kind of stuff. So I did start doing this all ahead of time. Um, it's not working yet, so forgive me. We'll have to do that on stream. <laughs> um, so I'm using this recommended module for Raylib uh, called um, NBNet. Uh, if I pull the browser up here, we'll see. I think uh, we can look at the GitHub repo for it. Uh, well, it didn't come up that easily. Give me a second here. It's called NBNet, right? Yeah, OK. Um, Whoa, I'm getting some, my battery's going on my my mouse. That's perfect timing. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, you could look it up online here. I, I can't recommend it or anything like that because I'm just starting to use it now. And who even knows if it really works, but hopefully it does. Um, so I guess I have a video here showing it working. Um, great, now we're get, I need to install Adblock on this browser session. <laughs> Oh, they're running it through. <laughs> I guess it runs through a browser too. Okay, using mscripten. Okay. Cool. So, um, yeah. Oh, yeah. By the way, I think they reference um, these series of articles called Gafferon Games. If you want to know the basics of uh, network programming, you really should check these out. Anyway, Gafferon Games. Now we're getting back to the networking library um, I was looking at this example earlier where they just send bytes over a pipe um, uh, so I was looking at their um, their um, server initialization code and then code that actually handles reading bytes over the network uh, I got to the point of initializing the server but I did not set up the um, code for reading bytes over the network yet so before we do anything, we just need to test the connection, right? We need to see that we can set up a host and have a client connect to it successfully. Okay. Well, um, hopefully, I wish I could have both of these open at the same time. Can I minimize this to work? No, minimization doesn't do anything to OBS, it turns out. Okay, I'll have to like hide the window each time I'm switch switching back and forth. Sweet, okay. Um, yeah, as you can see here, I just have like this initialize host function that I'm going to expose in the header. Um, and we can, we can test to see if that works. If it fails, um, it fails. But for now, let's just jump back to our main source file. And uh, we need to include the network code. So include network, the network header which will have uh, all our properly exposed functions. Okay, so the first thing I wanna do is see if that function actually causes the program to crash or not. So, right, so the top of our main function, I'm just gonna try to set this up. Does it crash our code? Does it cause an error? We'll see. Um, it's at, so it looks like Windows did detect it's trying to connect to the network, so. That works. Great. Uh, looks like I've successfully started hosting. Let me jump this function real quick. If everything works, I'm just going to log that started hosting. Okay. Hopefully, we'll get that. Oh, this is all the Raylib stuff. I guess Raylib has its own logging stuff. So actually, I need a command window to check what our output is real quick. So give me a second.
me a second. I need the command. I need some uh, debugging stuff. Uh, hold on. Linker system subsystem. Sorry about that. I needed to find a setting. Uh, linker system. Why am I getting any output? Uh, let's tr let's try this again. Oh wait, I think did did we get any output from that display device cloud? Oh, I know the problem. Sorry, my logging code is not correct. I need to actually ha do inline. That's probably what's going on. Huh. That's weird. Sorry about that. Y'all, I'm just trying to... Oh, this doesn't need to be there. Um, I need to do, let's just do printf for now. Weird. I'm not sure I'm not getting output now. Eh, we'll ignore that for now. Um, maybe raylib, raylib console window. Hold on. Okay. I'm kind of curious why I'm not getting any output. Let's try the main window real quick. Print F. This should work. Yeah, so print F is working. I'm not sure why it's not working in the other window. Am I actually, what was I, you know, I was calling this, huh. Maybe it actually failed. Oh, okay. It works. Oh, weird. My net log command doesn't work, though. Okay. Hmm. What, 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 what did I do here? Oh, maybe my vargs thing isn't working correctly. Hold on. Maybe this doesn't actually work. Sorry for the diversion here. This happens when you're coding. <laughs> Try to investigate why thing doesn't work. Okay. I don't know what's going on here. I don't know why this is not showing. Clearly. Oh. The last line didn't have a break. Don't know why that's the case. Hmm. Maybe it doesn't internally use a. Uh... Hmm. Anywho, let's just uh move on. <laughs> it's 
Sorry, I'm fading a little bit here. Okay, it looks like we can initialize the host. Now we need to initialize a client. Um, when you initialize the host, well, there's not really so much. I th Let me just check out their initialization code for clients. Um, I haven't really looked too much into it myself quite yet. Okay, where's the browser? If I fall asleep, I apologize. I don't know what's gotten over me. It is rainy outside, so it tends to do it to me. No, we'll get to rollback based stuff here. I just want to start with a very naive network implementation. And we're gonna like fix the implementation after that. I want to take people step by step. If I do too much upfront setup, people might miss out on some important points about game networking. Okay. Um, so I'm just looking at their client initialization code here. Looks like they, this is their main function. Where, where is the initialization code here? Oh, here we go. Okay. Okay, this is our client initialization code. We're just going to use that for now because I don't want to spend too much time doing anything experimental. Um, you know what? I'm just going to fail out. I'm not going to return a Boolean on that at all. Um, if everything anything goes wrong, I'm just going to like dump out of the program. Uh, da, 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 da. So, what is this? This is from their code, so. Okay, so we have this protocol name. Let's just make this a common thing. Okay, define protocol name. Let's. Now oh, we can do that. So we can share this uh, protocol name and uh, and port, um, and they're just setting up to use the local IP address here. Hopefully, that'll, that'll just work. Once we set up the connection, we'll see if it works or not. Let's get rid of this comment for now. Okay, and if they fail to start client, they didn't initialize and exit the program. Okay. Cool. Um, I'm not sure if this reflects a connection happening or not, but for now what we need to do is start the program in either host mode or client mode. Um, to handle that, we're just going to um, Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use input to detect that, and then we're going to either, either initialize the client or the host. So, um, let's see. Let's do... Let's go back to that cheat sheet. Oh, sorry, I had the browser up. If you guys see me like doing a lot of coding with the browser up, let me know. Unfortunately, minimizing in Windows does not hide the window in OBS. Maybe there's a setting for that. Capture cursor, client area. Uh, that doesn't work. I'm going to put this. Okay. Did the browser go away? Oops. I don't know what. Well, we lost the browser somehow. Okay. Sorry. Uh, da, 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 da. Cheat sheet. OK. 
Okay, let's do this. Oh, browse the back somehow. <laughs> okay. Um, so we need to check. What I'm gonna do is check to see if a key was pressed and then initialize the host if it isn't initialized already, right? And actually, I'm going to make a new enum here. top of the program. Um, let's see, I'm gonna delete some of this stuff. You don't need to worry about any any of this stuff. Um, okay. New enum. Uh, da, 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 enum class hosting network state. I'm just gonna do uh, hosting client none hosting client so none is before we do anything hosting if you're host and the client for um, hosting client easier that way okay and we're just gonna have the network state at the beginning of our program uh, net state okay alrighty uh, so if this equals none, so this is you know only check for starting host client when the network. Okay, what is this key press function? Go to definition. What are the key inputs? I'm gonna have to look at this cheat sheet again. What do you got here? Yo, what's up, Mighty Sandwich? Do we have the enums anywhere in here? We don't. What are the key states? Okay, hopefully we need to find the keyboard states that it uses. Example, core. Input mouse. Okay, I think this is what I want to use. So arrow keys. That will be key right, key left. Got it. Okay. Key right. Okay. We want key. I'm gonna use F1 for host and F2. F1 to host and F3 to connect the client. Eh. Okay. So this will initialize host. else, sorry, uh, initialize client, I'm going to fix up this, did that make, oh, that's not exposed yet, hold on, okay, and we do key F3. Uh, we need to surround this by brackets and the format. Yeah, did it format? Yeah. Ah. I don't know. Visual Studio sometimes doesn't seem to want to do what I asked it to do. Anyway. Also uh, initialize. Okay. Okay, and then we need to set the network state to net state equals network state host, and then the net state needs to be client. Okay, let's see if that works the way we expect it to. Ah, oh, crap, sorry. <laughs> okay, this is what I did. Uh, I added a new enum that indicates the network state. We're either connected, not connected, we're either a host or a client. Um, and then I just initialize that variable to none since we're not going to be connected at the beginning of the game running. Uh, when we're not connected, net state being none, 
if you press F1, it's going to initialize the host, and then it's going to set the network state to host. If it fails, the program's just going to drop out, so we don't have to worry about being in an invalid state. Um, and then if you press F3, we're going to be a client, and the client's going to try to connect to the host. Uh, we'll see what happens here. So uh, launch the program. I don't want to initialize the network host yet, so remove that code. Okay. Okay, F1 should initialize. Oh, you're not even seeing the command line, are you? Let me add the command line. I should add uh, logging to the main window, right? Does Raylib have uh, easy logging of um, standard out? Centered out. I will check that here in a second, but for now I'm just going to add the uh, the uh, console. Okay, what do we got? Okay, okay. So that you see what I'm seeing, I'm going to hold on real quick. Move this up here then the game needs to be moved, right? Let's lock the moment. Move this over here. It might get a little difficult in a bit once I have two clients running, but for now, we'll let that roll. Okay, so if I press F1, you should be able to see that uh, we started hosting. I'm not sure why we don't get end line here, but trace log is that a funk? Is that in the cheat sheet? Oh well, thank you, Heat, for uh, th that tip. I'm gonna try that real quick. I'm kind of curious what we're gonna see if I use tr trace log. Uh, is there an example? Congrats, moving ball. Let's see. We initialize. Okay, I'm just going to initialize window and set trace log here. I'm going to try this trace log thing here in a second. Where did that go? Oh, trace log, log. Oh, I think trace log is our own logging code, looks like. Uh, it doesn't show all printf stuff. Uh, does Raylib have like a console? Uh, We might do that later. It, that would have been nice stuff to set up before I, I did this. But for now, we'll just look at the console here. It might be a little inconvenient, but uh, yeah. Okay, we see we can host. And if we see if we press F3, nothing's going to happen. F1 does nothing. Uh, okay. What happens if we try to run the client right now by itself? Um, press F3. We get It says... In memory manager init with pulling started. We got no message about error and the program didn't cut out. So I'm kind of wondering um, I guess you can start the client without it connecting. Um, let's I need to add a script here um, real quick. Where's our output? Okay, I'm gonna open two instances. I don't know if you can see both instances, but uh, I'm going to start two of them. I don't know what's gonna happen. 
Um, I, I would like to set this up in a good way so that the stream can see everything. That's why I wanted the logging to happen on, on the game screen. Okay. Anyway, I do have two clients running right now. You just can't see them. Alrighty. So I'm going to set up a host. And I, I don't know if you can see that part. I'm going to set up a, a client. Don't see anything about them connecting from the uh, rate module, the Raylib module. Okay. So what do we need to do next? I'm going to go back to those examples um, that was in the browser. Where was he? Here, right? Okay. Uh, so when they initialize a client here, uh, they do the testing and everything. Okay. After that, when they're running, they, they tick their clients. So it's like MB client add time. And then they pull for events. Uh, there's a there's an on connection message, um, disconnection message, and a message received. I think this is a generic message that you can use. Um, for now, For now, I just want to try connection. So we're just going to copy this bit of code here. Uh, then I'll clean out what I need or not need. OK, um, back to uh, our code. I'm going to add a something you didn't see already, but I have a tick function for host. I had another tick function, uh, tick network client. Um, I'm going to remove some of this code that they had in their example. Um, this is this going to be, I don't know what this function does exactly. I'm assuming it's some kind of a network side update. I don't know why they need number. Uh, I don't know why they need a delta time. Um, what is it? Why is it? Yeah, there's no explanation here. Why they need delta time? It's gonna go with it for now. We don't need a while running here, unless we make this a separate thread. Um, I'm just gonna net log this. And instead of just doing this, we're not going to break out. We're just going to return. So OK, I guess that's if there's an error. Uh, not going to return. We're just going to close the program. That's what the exit here does. Uh, and we're not going to do this. We're just going to add a message real quick. Net log connected to host. OK. These we can use later. Okay, so I think this is while loop just gets every event from the network, and then it processes them. And that's basically what I want. Um, that's the network tick network client. We have something similar for the the server. Um, I'm going to comment those out as well for now. Um, yeah. There should be on the host. Reject incoming connection with code. I don't know what that is. Okay. Um, yes, yeah, so there's, there's this stuff for accepting an incoming connection. So it looks like we're good here. Let me jump back to the host code real quick. Mm. Oops. I go by. So we're just trying to establish a connection at the moment. I've never used this library before, so it's you know I'm experimenting it with it, and uh, I guess all learning together. Okay. So client doesn't equal no. Then it says reject incoming connection with code. 
Oh, okay. If there's already, if not a client already, I got it. Makes sense to me. What is this server busy code thing? Is that something to establish that's shared? Oh. Okay, that makes sense. I'm just going to use that as well. Okay, I like how the server busy code is 42. We're not actually using this yet, so maybe we'll get back to it. Not something we really need, unless we're actually accidentally running multiple clients. I'm going to keep this as simple as possible. You know what? So I'm just going to. I might be useful later. So actually, no. That's a bad way of thinking about things. Thinking something's gonna be useful later just bloats up code you don't you don't need. Yeah. So what we actually need to do here is I'm gonna change this to null pointer to be more in line with standard C. Okay, so we're gonna check to see if connection happens and then we're gonna accept the connection, it looks like. And we'll get back to this stuff later. Okay, cool. So all we need to do now is tick the client in the network, uh, depending on whether or not the client's running or the host is running. Uh, and I do want to like mention that the, the client connected. Client connected, yay. All right, accepting, accepting client connection. Sweet. Not Nick, net, net log, okay. Sweet. So we just need to test this code here. Let's see if we have any luck. So I'm just gonna set up a host here. Start hosting. I'm gonna open a second client. Try to see if we can get anything good going. Okay, I might have to make these windows smaller. Okay, uh, I did not get a connection. Oh, the reason for that is I need to start ticking. Okay, so when you go back to the main source file, oh, actually before we do that, we need to expose these functions, right? We don't have the tick functions exposed, so let me just uh, add a declaration in the host, in the header file for each of these. And now we should have access to it. Let me make sure that everything's nice and organized there. Oops. Um, okay. Okay, in our while loop, the first thing we're gonna do is gonna tick the network. So Okay. So we're gonna do if net state is equal to network state host. We're gonna do we're going to tick the host um, else if net state is equal to network state client we're going to take the client Oops. just to be clear about what we're doing we have separate code paths for the client and host oh it's, it's a different oh okay sorry so tick network tick network client okay so hopefully this works. Let me make a build here. Okay, and then I'm gonna run a host, which I, you can't see yet. I wanna add logging so you can see it easily. And then I'm gonna have a client running. I'm gonna connect that client. And I got no, oh, oh, what does it say? Connection is stale, disconnected. Well, that did not work. Why didn't it work? I got no message about it. What does this mean? Okay, we're gonna have to start with debugging here and seeing if we actually got a connection happening. So, uh, da -da 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 -da. I'm gonna start hosting on this side at a breakpoint in the network code. I'll close this real quick. So are we actually ticking the host first of all? I wanna check that. Okay, we are. Um, 
we got no events. That's fine. Um, continue going, and uh, I'm going to hit a breakpoint inside the wall loop to see if we have any events. Start a client. Do we get a connection at all? And it doesn't connect. Okay. What's going on here? What's the issue? Well, let's kill the client. Um, see what we verify if our client side stuff is working. Okay, so let me start a new host external to Visual Studio, and then I'll I will set a breakpoint in the client. Okay, looks like that works. We are ticking, it's fine. But what are we not doing? Um, it's not really gonna matter, but. So our client using host port, same protocol name. Maybe it's uh I mean Angry Sword? I depends a lot on what your scope is. It's like are you like what's priority for you? Do you wanna have 3D animation and that kind of stuff you want to go with like you know if you're going to do anything 3D you probably want to go ahead and use Unreal Engine or Unity. If it's just sprites you probably you know I don't know what the requirements are for a capstone if there are language requirements does it need to be compile a compiled language does it need to be if it's anything like there's all kinds of stuff you could use on um, Uh, something like, really, if there's no limitation on it, something like Raylib here seems pretty good uh, if you're just doing sprite-based. Um, there's also, like, the if you know anything about Lua, there's a Lua Love library. Well, it was actually an entire platform for running games. Uh, it's love with, like, two dots above the O. Lua Love. Um, outside of that, it's as, as much as I know uh, about what's available these days. Yeah, you know, if you're if you're doing sprites, I really wouldn't go with Unreal. Uh, I think there's some plugins and stuff for Unity, but I haven't used those in many many years, so I I can't really personally recommend those. So I wonder why we're not getting connection here. I wonder if it's uh. Well, let's try this. Oops, that went stale. Give me a second here. A few things could be going on. We're not getting any errors about ports, so I wonder if we're having some other issue. Oh, look at error. What did I do? Oh, yeah, let me close this first. Rebuild. Start the game. Uh, start hosting on this side. And then, oh, we're getting close to two hours here. I do want to cut it off sometime around then. I'm sorry we didn't get to actual synchronization part of the, of this. There we go. Yeah. Great. Um, hmm. <laughs> yeah, this is the fun part is debugging like third party libraries you don't know anything about. Right. Okay. So I'm going to double check their example code. Um, Let's just share dot C. What does that do? They have a sleep function. Sleep for a given amount of seconds, which we're going to sleep anyway because of the uh, 
tick rate, the frame limiter in uh, Raylib. But if you're for your, um, I would go with what you have experience with. If it's for a capstone project, don't expect to use the, the code after you're done with that. So it's fine. You know, you don't. The, the problems you're going to run into with Unity end up being issues with games you're going to release at the end of the day. But like, you can work around that stuff as a student project. I think. Yeah. Um. Okay, let me check some stuff here. Uh, okay, um, what did I miss? It looks like we're getting any events from the client. I wonder why. Do we need to like manually do this? Oh, is, is it this function? Game client send packets. Do we need to do that? Let me check something real quick. Oh, it looks like we need to do something like this. Yeah, I I assumed wrongly that the ticking the server would send everything, but I guess we have to do that. Okay, so let's set up the server to send packets. I think they're doing this in the while loop. Yeah, so it must be the main game loop. Okay, so let's go back to our ticking server. So I guess they're gonna handle all the events from the network and then and then we'll send packets. Okay. Uh, I'm just gonna change this to no log. Fail to send packets. Oops. Uh, and we're just gonna exit. And I think we do the same thing with the client. So maybe this will uh, let us establish a connection. Close the, the poll for handling the, the wall loop for handling all events. And after that, we're going to do the client version of this. I think it's game client it does it. Um, and great. OK, let's build that again so we can get any progress here. Hey, Angry Sword, no problem. If you have any other questions, yeah, you feel free to ask anything, to be honest. This is just kind of a chill, relaxed coding stream, so. Read the header file out and says, number of seconds before the connection is considered stale and gets closed. Huh. I need, I need to check that out. Heat. Let's see. I think it's really coming down here today. Oh no, I had some clothes hanging outside. Great. Probably wet now. No, it's not. It's only like one piece of, piece of clothing. Um, yeah, so did I build? Let me build, double check. And uh, let me run a host and run the client and see what happens. Oh, looks like we're connected now. You can't see it, but the, out, the terminal is spinning a lot of stuff. I don't know what it's spinning. Wow, it's spinning a lot of logging. Whoa. I guess because I... Uh... Yeah. Let me turn off the verbose logging. So we have a connection now. It's working. Uh, you can't see it, but I don't because the console didn't show up. I think next time when I do this, I'm gonna have the the console set up for this example project, um, so that you guys can see it, you all can see it. 
Um, it looks like we got a lot of verbose debugging. So I'm going to disable the verbose debugging for now. Uh, mm, yeah. Does that work? I don't know. It's, uh, it's been so long since we've done a lot of this macro stuff. Yeah, that seems that I think that works. Okay. Um, now, do we have less verbose debugging? Is a question. But verbose logging. Sorry. I'm fading here. Probably. Okay. We'll cut off here in about a few minutes. So. Okay, we accept the client connection. I don't know if you can see that. The connection is established. Um, sorry for all this time spent on setting up network code. I couldn't get to the point of actually doing a lot of uh, um, synchronization coding, but uh, here in a bit. I'm going to end the stream. It's only almost been two hours. I'm, I'm sorry for anybody who really wanted to see the actual synchronization stuff, but we had a bit of setup uh, to do before I could get there. So um, does anybody want me to go over anything or anybody have any questions before I cut the stream off? Uh, I'll give you guys a few minutes. Next time I stream will probably be Thursday here in Japan. So like not two days from now. And we'll continue doing this. Right now, we've well, well we, let's, let's review what we've done. We just set up a basic game with two playable uh, entities that are controlled not directly through gamepad input, but uh, an input state. And we're going to be able to two send that input state once we get there over the network as uh, just bytes that are stored in packets, and be able to de should be able to decode them next time. Um, looks like it's pretty straightforward to send messages with this networking library. So the, the next steps are to code the, the encode, send the uh, inputs over the network, and decode them and uh, handle them on either on either client. Um, what I really want to do is have the stream show both clients at the same time on uh, on stream. I need I just need to set up a few. I just needed a few different bookkeeping things to make sure that it can happen, like giving the Windows unique names for each client so that OBS can find them. I'm not going to do that right now, but I'll do it uh, hopefully by th Thursday, and we can get started on sending messages back and forth with uh, player inputs. And then we can get in the real fun part of actual synchronization and solving all those problems. Hopefully we'll be pretty deep into that next time. Yeah, again, anybody who has any questions and stuff, feel free to ask. Probably cut this off in five minutes or so. While we're waiting on that, I'm just going to do a little bit of bookkeeping stuff. Like uh, sending the, being able to control the window name. through like a command line option or something. Mm. Does this work? I don't think this works on Windows, right? Oh, that works fine. Okay, cool. Let's see.
right now I'm just setting up like window title naming so I can use it for the stream later but I'm not actually gonna be doing this um, much longer five minutes or so I think He that uh he says he's set up a bunch of stuff in Godot to make it possible to use rollbacks, including fixed point math, physics, things like that. Sounds like a lot of work. <laughs> I I tend to just like write my own gaming simulation and not bother even trying to adapt existing gameplay engines for rollbacks. Um, the guys, you know, over at Blizzard for Overwatch, I believe they did a lot of uh, stuff to make sure they could do. Um, prediction and correction in using um, synchronous, not synchronous lockstep, but uh, sorry, deterministic lockstep kind of ways. Um, they they both support, obviously, they need to have uh, like um, true state synchronization where they send the game state, or at least uh, changes in the game state to each clients, because you're not going to realistically do deterministic simulation um, to truly synchronize all clients, but it is a way to use less bandwidth. Uh, and there's other reasons to do that kind of deterministic, deterministic simulation, even on a client or host client based, uh, host client based netcode, right? Or server, server client based netcode, if you want to put it that way. Oh yeah. Oh, anyway, let's. I think I'm gonna be able to set up a better. Uh, what I mean is, I think I'm gonna be able to like show both game clients, and the consoles, or at least have some kind of logging being displayed on the stream next time. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to set it up for this, um, but it shouldn't be too much of a problem. Anyway, does anybody have any final questions before I cut off the stream? It's been about a good two hours, so it's about a good point for me to go grab some lunch and get uh, back well, get started on my real job so well so no questions um again thank you again for stopping by i hope you learned something i know we didn't get too deep into any of the true networking stuff yet but uh we'll get there hopefully discourse you ever plan on releasing the indie fighting games you're working on uh i mean i have various small projects you're talking about fearless night we're in the process of uh i would say pre-production just figuring all the tech we need for ue5 uh artist on the team he's still experimenting with his own 3d artwork and stuff we haven't really pinned down like a visual style for it yet so um both of us work full-time so it's only, you know, it's only, only so much we can get done in the hours we're not either at work or, or playing games ourselves. So, you know, uh, I did have my own engine, um, but when it, you know, came to uh, not of hours I have in a day, just maintaining uh, the engine and adding all the features that I wanted became it became very intractable, right? Um, I wanted to switch to 3D. I did implement a 3D animation system, everything like that. But at the end of the day, it's just, I'm just not going to be able to do the stuff that uh, engineers do for like Epic, right? So I don't know what I'm going to do with that engine. It's not the cleanest code. It's something I've been working on since college about a decade and a half ago. I don't know. It's not something worth sharing. It'd be too much work to actually clean it up to be 
anything useful. Maybe the fighting game portion could be pulled out and shared, but I don't know. Well. All right, y'all. Thank you for stopping by on the stream. Uh, I plan to do this again Thursday and continue on. Uh, Thursday here in Japan It's going to be Wednesday evening out there in the States. So, all right, y'all. Thanks again, and I uh, hope you can stop by next time. And, yeah, that's it. See you soon. Peace out.